Hi everyone and welcome to this week's fabulous episode of QTV. I'm Michael James. I'm Sharon Mulheron. And I'm Matthew Bowe. QTV is Queensland's only LGBTIQ television show and we're happy to be bringing it to you. Joining us on the couch tonight for our third episode, we have the LMP member for Brisbane Central, Robert Cavallucci, and he's here to answer your questions which you've submitted to us. We'll also be talking about the Queer Film Festival and its opening night, which we all attended. But first, the news. This week, the lower house of the Tasmanian Parliament supported the advancement of legislation which would remove the ban on same-sex adoption and escalated it to the upper houses. Currently, the stranger adoption, where a couple adopts a child who is not related to him or her, is restricted to opposite-sex couples. This bill will allow adoption authorities to choose from the widest pool of prospective parents, Tasmanian gay and lesbian rights group spokesman Rodney Croom said. The bill in particular allows foster children already in the care of same-sex couples to be adopted by their foster parents when it is in their best interests. Wow. Well, not all seem to agree. Anti-LGBTIQ flyers were recently distributed in Launceston, Tasmania, condemning homosexuality as unhealthy, claiming that lesbians were 307 times more likely to die in accidents than white women aged 25 to 44. This has prompted the Tasmanian LGBTIQ rights advocates to lodge a complaint to the state's Anti-Discrimination Commission and the Tasmanian Gay and Lesbian Rights Group spokesman Rodney Croom again has commented that the fact that there's still this kind of hate in parts of the community shows that that's why it's important that we remove all discrimination from our laws, especially when we're dealing with something as important as marriage. And children too, I guess. Absolutely. That's such a fantastic piece of news. It's just coupled with such hate and vitriol that comes with these sorts of things. I mean... Fantastic. That is just the right sort of legislation I wanted to hear coming forward there. Um, and we've got such an opportunity to send such a clear message with it as well. It's, it's yeah, good. I'm in that percentage of people, 25 to 44 white Australian women, and, um, you know, what a statistic. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Anyway, in other news, a petition started by the Australian Christian Lobby, the ACL, <laughs> could affect the rules for all outdoor advertising in Queensland. In a letter tabled in Parliament on April 3, Attorney General Jared Blige stated the community's concerns about adver outdoor advertising, particularly the rip and roll posters from the Queensland Association for Healthy Communities, have led him to question the appropriateness of the current model of control, requesting all outdoor advertising to become G-rated. Sources involved in the outdoor advertising industry have said that nothing has been formally raised by the Queensland Government. Well. We all know where I stand on that one. <laughs> Look, honestly, I think that the ACL have a point there with some of the G-rated mm, stuff definitely. that needs to be out there. But the advert that you were in, I didn't have a problem with mm. that. It promoted safe sex and I don't have a problem with gay people being in advertising. That's not un-G-rated. That mm. is G-rated. Absolutely. It's, it's going to be very tricky to really define what G-rated is going to be there. Um, but in more happier news, uh, at a Detroit concert last month, uh, rock band Garbage paused their show to invite two fans up on stage to let a man named Scott propose to his boyfriend of four years, Dominic. The band's front woman, Shirley Manson, was contacted by Scott via Facebook and gave them backstage passes. After Scott proposed, the crowd went wild, followed by Dominic shouting, yes, yes. Garbage then played their song, Vow, dedicating it to them. Manson is well known for her support of the LGBTIQ community and has previously spoken out against the reluctance of US politicians to allow same-sex marriages. That's great. Isn't that just fantastic? I love it. It's brilliant. And politicians are having uh, Politicians actually seem to be listening to rock stars because that's who's speaking to the people. So They have lots of people turn up to their <laughs> concerts. Absolutely. Queensland Health will be conducting surveys this weekend to study and review the sexual behaviour of the LGBTI community. 
The survey is part of the future HIV AIDS campaign by the Ministerial Advisory Committee, also known as the MAC, aimed to promote education and reduce stigma. However, Executive Director of Queensland Association for Healthy Communities, Paul Martin, questioned the transparency, independent nature and expertise of the survey back in January, commenting that there was already numerous surveys out in the community, including annual gay community periodic survey that was independently and competently gathering data using methods that are internationally renowned and respected. I am not even going to comment on that minefield. Uh, Very interesting. Earlier this week, Puberty Blue star Brenna Harding accepted her award for most popular new female talent at the Logies with joy and thanked her two mothers on stage. If you missed the Logies, the 16-year-old actress was in tears saying, I especially have to thank two women, my beautiful mothers, Vicky and Jackie, who have been so incredibly supportive and so wonderful, not just in the last three months of shooting, but in all of my 16 years. Thanks so much, mums. That is just beautiful. Mm. It really touches my heart. And um, I just hope that, you know, everybody realises that gay parents can bring up children that are quite successful. And they kids that can do anything they want. That's exactly right. <laughs> A beautiful moment on television. Uh, now, last month, Brisbane City Council approved the Brisbane GLBTIQ Action Group's request for a community support LGBT page. The webpage has now gone live with information on different services that support Brisbane residents, such as the Open Doors Youth Service. However, the page remains unlisted on the drop-down menu and hidden even when searching LGBT on its website. A letter of thanks, including suggested improvements, has been sent to the Brisbane City Council by the Brisbane LGBTIQ Action Group. That's true. And anybody who wants to join BLAG um, are welcome to do so as well. Great to have the council's support. A week ago, in a Huffington Post interview, Academy Award winner Jeremy Irons told the interviewer that he believed same-sex marriage poses interesting questions, including whether allowing it would also allow a father and son to get married. Irons said, it's not incest between men because incest is there to protect us from inbreeding, but men don't breed. He then continued on, asking whether same-sex marriage would allow fathers to pass on their estates to their sons without being taxed. After the the public outrage, he clarified his comments on the website, saying, I am clearly aware that many gay relationships are more long-term, responsible, and even healthier in their role of raising children than their hetero equivalents, and that love often creates the desire to mark itself in a formal way, as marriage would do. Clearly, society should find a way of doing this. I had hoped that even on such a subject as this, where passions run high, the internet was a forum where ideas could be freely discussed without descending into name calling. I'm not even talking about that. (laughs) Move on. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the news for this week. If you have any news stories that you'd like us to cover, make sure that you contact us on any of our social media streams, Facebook and Twitter. Also, you can email the producer, Steve Whiteley, at steve.whiteley at 31.com.au. Now, we'll be back after this very short break with more for QTV. Welcome back to QTV. We're very lucky tonight to be joined on the couch by state LNP member for Brisbane Central, Robert Cavallucci. Hi, Rob. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, we've got a couple of questions for you tonight. Uh, to kick it off, uh, Sharon, you've got to well, we fire want to away. focus on your political career mm-hmm. and as well as your involvement with the LGBTI community. So um, we've asked people to send in some questions. We'll ask you a few of those tonight. What I want to know is before you were elected and since you were elected, mm-hmm. what sort of future plans have you got for the LGBTI community? Um, well, since I've been elected, um, I've... Uh, basically undertaken uh, as much engagement as I possibly could with uh, not only the LGBTIQ community in my electorate, but all communities in my electorate. I've um, spent a lot of time uh, in relation to LGBTIQ going to uh, Big Gay Day, Pride Festival, um, Queen's Ball. Um, I was at the launch of uh, this very program at um, at uh, uh, the Wickham the other night as well. Um, I uh, have uh, assisted in in uh, getting grants for the Gay and Lesbian Business Network and uh, attend their monthly events. 
and as well have um, supported um, the Transgender Support Network um, with um, sort of hampers and prizes to, to raffle and uh, so that um, I can support them as well. So um, I've done, uh, made every effort to engage with the LGBTI community in my electorate um, since being elected and, and did the same thing prior as well, so. That's yeah. wonderful. Okay, hello. Uh, <laughs> why do you think the LGBTI community should work with and support the LNP government? And do you think there are enough voices speaking up to ensure the protection of future rights for the LGBTI community? Um, well, I think any community um, that is looking to uh, achieve change of whatever description um, needs to work with government. And to not work with the government of the day is really doing a disservice to their own community. Um, so, uh, I think um, if you are looking for change, um, whatever that may be, um, you really uh, should take the time to encourage the members of your community to engage with the government. Um, in terms of um, this, the second part of the question, um, uh, I think you, you can never have enough voices, I, I guess, is probably the best answer to that question. Um, uh, but again, if, if you want to have more voices, uh, you have to take the initiative and engage with the government. Um, because unless unless you do so, and um, it, you just you're just not going to have those voices um, have the confidence to to emerge and participate in the discussion. They're just going to remain uh, remain behind closed doors and and not really take the initiative to to really um, you know assist you on on your journey of uh, of change. And what would you say is the best way for them to engage with the government? Um, I, I guess like members of my community, they pick up the phone, they email, they call me, I call them. Um, I, I uh, as I've said in the previous question, I go to um, your community events and um, I'm there, I'm available. I can, I can be spoken to, I'm, you know, uh, I'm happy to be criticised, I'm happy to be uh, uh, convinced, I'm happy to, uh, you know, participate in all forms of discussion. So, uh, you know, just make yourself available. Um, so that's, that's the best way to do it. Okay, great. Well, um, as the viewers may be aware, uh, we requested people to send in their questions uh, for Robert via Twitter. Uh, now, James Hulkren uh, wanted to know how you were working to support other LNP members uh, who support marriage equality and uh, help, are helping to change the LNP policy on the issue. So I suppose the first thing to, mm -hmm. to get out of that is, do you support marriage equality? Um, yeah, I, I guess I'm someone with particularly progressive views on, on marriage equality. So yes, I, I do support it. Um, and, Yep, sorry. <laughs> no. say, that, that's great to hear. Yeah. Um, and are there other um, partners, members of the party um, in Queensland, particularly, that well, you know that support it as well? Well, again, I, I can't specifically speak on behalf of you know my colleagues, whether they be state or whether they be federal. But um, uh, they're, they're, um, the, the, the state LNP members uh, represent a real diverse group of electorates. Um, we have members from, you know, the, the Cape down to down to Coolangatta and everywhere in between. Um, and not every electorate is like the inner city of Brisbane, which I represent. Um, that we come from such diverse backgrounds and we come from such diverse electorates. Um, I, I think uh, we uh, some some of us have particular views and some of have completely opposing views. But um, mm. Uh, again, I, I can't really answer, you know, specifically on, on the views of, of my colleagues. Um, you know, again, best to engage with them and, and you know, get an understanding of, um, you know, them as your representatives. Okay. Can we expect to see them um, joining you in, in any sort of support for the GLBT community? Yeah, I, I think I've had this conversation with you before. For the next Queen's Ball, I'm, I'm definitely going to invite um, a bunch of my colleagues to come along with me this year as I, I sat with you at your table last year. and. Um, I'm happy to bring some of my colleagues along. So. Excellent. Well, yeah, be I'll be there, night. so I'll see you there. But what I want to know about is adoption. What, what's mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. stance on adoption for gay families? Well, the, the um, I, I guess the, the legislation you're referring to is the the legislation back in introduced in 2009 by the former government. Um, uh, as you know, we this government hasn't made any changes to that legislation, um, but um, the the only person who can really guide any changes to that legislation is is the minister for communities um so in terms of um uh, changing that legislation that that really comes under the purview of the minister so i, I can't really uh, provide you any specific feedback on that um, but if if you're after my personal comment or my personal point of view 
um, then, I, you know, I think that there are some elements of it that, you know, potentially could be changed. But again, that's my personal point of view, and it's, it's not party policy. Really, any change is, is, is under the, you know, the auspices of the minister. Yeah. And so you do support same-sex adoption rights for same-sex couples? Uh, yeah, in line with my previous comment, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, one of the most popular questions we've had in via Twitter and Facebook is focused around the cut of the sexual health clinic by Allah. Mm -hmm. um, we had two people, Q Public Servant and Flat Earth Gang on Twitter, both ask whether you support the closure of the Biola sexual health clinic. Um, Quickly. Well, Yes, yeah, sorry. Just quickly, what yeah. do you think about um, that? Quickly, uh, we, we went to the last election with a, with a clear uh, mandate in relation to local service delivery uh, of health services. That was to hand over responsibility of that delivery to local hospital boards. And in this case, the closure um, was uh, undertaken by the hospital board. It was not the minister. Um, and the hospital board has the, the uh, decision-making power in relation to that. In relation to the AIDS, HIV AIDS component of the service delivery, um, the, again, the delivery of those services come under the auspices of the ministerial advisory body. They have said that they will retain those services there and there's currently a uh, review being undertaken as we speak about the staffing requirements to ensure the delivery of those services at the location. Okay. Okay. I think I want to do something quickly. What do you guys think? I yeah. Do. Now, uh, Rob, we've got a little something we've devised here. It's the uh, the QTV Quick Six. Now, would you mind doing our Quick Six questions? Sure. Okay. Super quick. Super quick. Super we've got quick. less than six, 60 seconds to yep. get them out and get them answered. Completely taking you by surprise here. No rehearsing. So, first thing that comes to your mind, first answers. You ready to go? Yep. All right. Fantastic. What was your first music concert you attended? Uh, bon Jovi. Which LNP member would make the best drag queen? Uh, Jared Blay. <laughs> What's your favourite colour? Blue. Not green? No. <laughs> and um, you're trapped in a padded room with somebody. Is it Gillard or Catter? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> you got to pick one. Oh, Gillard. <laughs> what did you have for breakfast? Um, oats. Okay. And is Tony Abbott's obsession with budgie smugglers an attempt to turn gay men straight? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, participating in that part of the interview as well. Um, but it's been great having you on the couch um, and getting uh, your responses there. And I, I really hope that people um, have managed to take something away from our time with you tonight. Um, and obviously they know that uh, if they do want to get in touch with you to discuss anything from tonight, they can contact your office. Um, sure. Obviously, you are also available on Facebook and on Twitter, uh, as you can find all of us to convey any of your feedback as well. Uh, we'll be back uh, after this very short commercial break here on QTV. Thank you very much. Rob Cavallucci. You're welcome. Thanks State for having me. Roots and Central. Welcome back to QTV, where we're still joined by our special guest, Robert Cavallucci. The 14th annual Brisbane Queer Film Festival celebrated its opening night on April 5th, last Friday, at the Brisbane Powerhouse. For those of you who've been living under a rock, Brisbane Queer Film Festival is the largest festival celebrating queer cinema in Queensland, and third largest in Australia. It showcases 58 films by and about the queer community from all over the globe. We all three, and Rob as well, uh, went to the opening night, and we had a great night. I had a great night, I don't like the rest of you. It wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a good night. What did you think about the film? Did you um, enjoy it? The first one was great. I loved the first little cartoony one that we saw on the opening night. Part. Yep, that was great. Yeah. Um, but what did you think about the second one, Matt? I, I didn't particularly like either of them, but I mean, you're not surprised by that, so. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've written an interesting review about the, the main film. It had its ups and downs, led by a stunning actor, but uh, you'll have to get it when it comes out on DVD. But uh, we've got a lot happening this week. Um, now, as we've been mentioning every week, the Hustlers have got their next uh, game coming up. Uh, that's Rugby Union. Uh, it's a home game uh, this Saturday. It's at the uh, Cooparoo uh, Sports Oval, uh, East, East Rugby East Union. Club. That's the one. Uh, it's on at 3 o'clock versing Riverside this Saturday. And you can head on after that down to Sporties for the fundraiser for the Are You OK barbecue on, uh, on Saturday night. Sounds fun. Mm. 
Um, or you could um, head off to the lesbian event at uh, St Paul's Tavern, which is Scarlet. That's on Saturday night as well. well. I couldn't so, go there, but you could. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, well, that's exactly right. Um, and, of course, there's also the um, Grab and Go art collection, which is next Friday. So um, look that one up on Facebook and um, you can go along there and grab your art and take it with you. Very nice. Um, we've also got Curiosity run by Open Doors on Saturday, which is at 12 p.m. at the Holy Trinity Church up until about 4 p.m. Uh, it's for under five, 25s only, and adults must be accompanied by a child. Ah, that sounds like a great day. Um, now, the last thing that will be happening this week, now, Rob, you'll be at this one as well. I will indeed. You seem to be at everything lately. I try. <laughs> it's the um, Are You OK barbecue. Um, Specifically, uh, uh, I think they've called it Rainbow OK now uh, for uh, the mental health and well-being of the GLBTIQ community, which our guest was speaking about last week. Mm. So make sure you get along to that at New Farm Park from 11 till 4 on this Sunday. Um, now, thank you very, very much for joining us for our show tonight, Rob. It's, Thanks uh, for having me again. It's been very interesting to have you on board. I and hope, I've... Hopefully it's been as much fun for you as it was for me. <laughs> oh, look, it was great. And um, are you going along to Brisbane Queer Film Festival at all for any more flicks? Um, probably not. Uh, again, I, I think I did my dash with the opening night, but um, I have a pretty busy life. So uh, trying to fit in another film in, in the same week is pretty difficult. So Well, there's a really good trans movie coming up on the Sunday, uh, the 14th. So it's called Trans, not too hard to remember. So get along to that one and see Wouldn't that mind too. getting along to see that. Well, that's all we have for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us uh, for our third episode of QTV. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, we will be seeing you all next week. Uh, my name is Michael James. I'm Sharon Mulheron. And I'm Matthew Bowe. We'll see you next week. See ya. See ya. TV's fantastic night out. We have joined everybody else here. Yes, the film was Keep the Lights On, which was a very interesting film. I, I really enjoyed it. It was a little bit more, I think, about addiction. Well, I think it was the real primary focus, addiction on both drugs and sex. Um, I think that every, pretty much every story about a drug addicted gay sex couple has been told. We probably don't need another one, but you know. Uh, if anyone's having any trouble hearing us at the moment, it's because the fabulous Liza on an E is performing on the stage. She's an international drag act. Also uh, goes by the male name of Trevor Ashley, and she is absolutely fabulous. She can you hear her? If you can hear her, you can hear how fabulous she is. Well, I will tell you that I love you, kiss your hug you, cause I'm bluffing with my mother. I'm just loving with my love. This party is always the party to be at. One of many. I think it's been really interesting to see how BQFF has developed over the years in Brisbane. It's been really encouraging to see that it's become something that everybody is really keen to celebrate. It's not just one thing that happens that a few people go to. I'm hoping that it goes off. They've got so many more films than normal. I mean, there's two lots of girl shorts, two lots of boy shorts. And there's a whole rack of trans shows as well. There is trans stuff this year. I think what, last year there was one. Um, this year, I, I can't even, there's like three or four. There's so, so many movies, they're gonna have so much fun. Hello, I'm Rachel Jacobs. I'm the Greens candidate for the seat of Brisbane. So it's lovely to have someone here from the, the political side of things who actually is taking an interest in the community and, and wants to know more about the community. Uh, have you been to the Queer Film Festival before? Absolutely. I've been a serial attender for the last five or six years. So, yeah, just another great year here. Yeah. Hey guys, here we are with Davina from Dykes on Mikes. Hi, Davina. Hey, how are you going? Great. What do you think of this great party? Um, it's fabulous. I love this event. It's, a, it's an amazing sort of bringing together of everyone that you haven't seen for such a long time. Um, it's a chance to uh, chat to people you don't normally speak to. Um, it's, it's wonderful. I adore this party. So, um, have you been here before? Or? No, it's my first time here and I'm very delighted to be here. Um, it's a great celebration of everything wonderful and spectacular about Brisbane's queer community and I'm delighted. It's such a pleasure to be here tonight and catch up with you and 
all our friends and uh, other people involved in the, the arts in Brisbane and in the film industry. We've got Tyrone here from the Gay and Lesbian Business Association and what a great party. It's a fantastic party. I've just arrived but I can tell you the champagne's flowing very well. DJ's doing a great job and we love it here. Hey Craig, how are you going? Good, how are you? Now I do believe you've got some awesome news to share with us. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. You have Silver Stiletto going into the boys shorts here at Brisbane Queer Film Festival. Yep, it'll be screening at uh, 5 o'clock on the 12th of April, which is next Friday. Wow, you must be so excited. I hear you've won a couple of prizes already for your movie. Yep, that's right. Um, we won the Audience Award at the Queer Film Festival. And uh, about two weeks ago, we won the um, Celluloid Casserole Jury Award at the Melbourne Queer Fest Film Festival. So that's that was pretty exciting. Silver Stiletto, just give us a quick rundown for those who don't know what the movie's about. Okay, that's pretty easy. It's uh, it's about an ex-SAS soldier turned vigilante drag queen. Wow. I found some fabulous and pretty ladies that are entertaining me for the night. I have Taylor, Twiggy and Holly. Ladies, how are we doing this night? Start with you, Taylor. Yeah, look, we're not bad. We're not bad. We're enjoying the booze. The booze is making it nice, but it's really hot. I do love booze, and it is very, very hot. What about you, Twiggy? How's your night going? It's an amazing night, but thank God for champagne. Yes, champagne is the word of the night. Loving it. I've had two myself. What about you, Holly? I'm having a fabulous night. Until it started raining, and my outfit went see-through. Yeah, I saw you running from the rain before, like a cat from a bath. 